Hi guys, we're coming to you live today from Israel Diamond Supply. Um, we want to talk about three weird things that could happen to your ring and totally unexpected. We get a lot of phone calls about these things and then people are always asking us why did this happen. These things are more common than you think they are and I bet a few of you have gone through similar situations. If you have experienced situation like this before, uh, send a comment via our Facebook Live and we'd love to hear from you and then see how you were able to solve that particular issue. Uh, the first issue that uh, I wanna address today is uh, your finger breaking out after you've had the ring for a while. So let's say you've had your ring for six months, a year, two years, sometimes five years in certain cases we hear from our clients. And then suddenly there's a little red rash that has developed right around your finger. And you know, a lot of people have gone to the doctor, some doctors immediately attribute it to a metal allergy. Well, you're not gonna suddenly be allergic to something that you've had on your fingers for months or years at this time. So the easiest explanation for this, and we've had a lot of experience with that, it is basically nothing but bacteria build up on the underneath gallery of your ring. So first thing we would like for you to do, if you're experiencing a problem like that, take your ring off and then notice where is the rash. If the rash is mostly on the top part of your finger, but not the very bottom of your finger, that is a classic case of bacteria that has basically started building in the gallery of your ring. Most rings have little holes underneath to allow for the diamonds to be able to clean. And then, you know, with soap and lotion and products that you use on your hands all the time, that creates a buildup. And Based on that, you know, if you hadn't had your ring cleaned periodically, frequently, that buildup eventually is going to harbor bacteria from moisture and heat, and it's going to break out your finger. Now, to the solution. What if you're experiencing something like this? This little cheap fix that you can buy at any drugstore or retail store is basically going to be your best friend. So the best way to do this, if you are not able to access your jeweler, would be to take your ring, and I'm gonna use this ring as an example. Uh, it is one that we need to clean, and I'm not sure if it does have any bacteria in it or not, but we're gonna test it. So just put enough hydrogen peroxide in the little bowl to cover the ring, and we're going to put the ring in there. And if this ring is had any bacteria underneath it, we will start to see some white bubbling and foaming. You're starting to see little tiny bubbles forming there, in cases that are extremes, you will actually see an immediate foam, almost like when you pop uh, a can of soda open and you pour it and there's like white foam coming. This one is a fairly clean, not that much buildup on it, but you can start seeing the bubbles come up. So if that's the case, you soak it in the hydrogen peroxide for about 15 to 20 minutes until you no longer see any foaming happening. Take it out of the peroxide, rinse it off with warm water, Soak it in some Windex, just get it really cleaned up with Windex and then rinse it off again with some warm water and then tap it dry on a paper towel. Our recommendation as, at that point is to take it to your jeweler, let them do a very thorough polishing and cleaning on the piece, get it really cleaned up. And as far as the rash on your finger, just tend to it with like antibiotic ointment like Neosporin and do not put anything back on your hand until the redness has completely gone away. We promise it's not a magic allergy that you've suddenly developed. In 99.9% .9 of the cases, that is the culprit and you should be able to easily fix it yourself. On to the second topic. So you bought a ring or you were given a ring and then it was white gold and then you've worn it for a few months to a year to two years and then suddenly that ring is starting to look yellow to you. It has a yellowish cast to it. Well, did your ring suddenly turn from white to yellow? No, not really. So let's break it down first. So white gold is nothing but a mixture of alloys. Mother Nature does not produce white gold. We take white gold, we bring in some white alloys because, you know, we like the silver look, and then we mix the two metals together. So that's going to give us a whitish metal, not quite pure white. It's going to be a mixture. It's a tinted white. It's almost like an off-white. And then to give it that bright white look that you're used to seeing whenever you bought your ring, there is a process called rhodium plating. So rhodium plating is a process where we take the ring, the ring is actually dipped into a rhodium solution, and then that solution electrobonds to the ring and then gives it that white, bright, shiny coat. 
So you wear your ring on a daily basis, you use product, you wash your hands, you use hand sanitizers. All of these factors are going to wear down that coating of rhodium that all white gold that you see on the market has on it, or the majority of it has it. So as you wear that rhodium off of there, you will start seeing that yellowing happening, and that's exactly what you're seeing. I have three examples here of some rings. So this ring is a brand new white gold that does have the rhodium plating on it. You can see how bright white the color is. This is an actual yellow gold ring. So you see how much contrast in the color there is. This is yellow gold, this is not white gold. And then this is a ring that is actually white gold that has not been rhodium plated yet. And you will notice that the color is a tinted white that is almost in between the yellow and the white color. So that's the base of white gold. When your white gold is yellowing, it's going to have that yellow tint to it, but it's not gonna be quite yellow gold like natural yellow gold would be. And that's normal on all white gold. Once a year for most of us, it's recommended that you take your white gold into your jeweler and then have them repolish it and re-rhodium plate it for you. At Israel Diamond Supply, we offer that service complimentary once a year to our clients. So if it's a ring that you've bought from us, it is starting to turn yellowish and it does need that rhodium plating, then you can always bring it in to us and we'll have our jewelers take care of it for you. And then the third problem, and that is a case that I've seen twice last week, which brought it to mind. What if the ring gets stuck on your finger and you can't get it off? There's probably not a worse feeling on the face of the planet. The ring is stuck, your finger is swelling, it's throbbing, you're panicked. So what do you do? So, you know, few elements that would cause your fingers to swell. A lot of it could be, you know, heat versus cold. A lot of it could be some of the foods that you had the day before or the day of or the night before. So if you've eaten a lot of salt and you haven't had a lot of water, your body's going to retain water and it's going to swell. And in the cases that I've seen with some of my clients during pregnancies, so very important, whenever you are pregnant, your body is fluctuating, your hormones are fluctuating, and we do tend to swell during pregnancy. So my recommendation, if you are expecting and you're in your last trimester, best thing to do if the ring is snug or feels a little uncomfortable, just play it safe and go ahead and take it off. Uh, these days, a lot of people can buy those inexpensive silicone type of rings online. You can just wear it in place of your ring if you don't want to go without a ring for a couple of months. And these are easy to remove, you know, should you need to. Uh, in the case where you have your ring stuck on your finger, and let's say you've had a lot of salt the day before, or again, your finger is swelling, what do you do? So first thing, try not to panic because the more panicked you are, the more your body is going to react to it, the worse it's going to make it. The second thing I would recommend, first, ice is going to be your best friend. So the colder, the better. This is going to shrink the tissue around your hand. So go ahead and stick your hand all the way into ice. Get that ice all the way around your finger. It is not gonna feel great, but it is going to shrink your finger down a little bit. And then take the ring, Use Windex. Windex is very slippery and it helps you keep a grip on the ring because it's not like lotion to where you're gonna slip and slide everywhere. So Windex, after you've iced it for maybe two, three minutes, see how it starts slipping on its own. Take the ring and then start twisting it around like you're unscrewing a light bulb. That is the best method I have found to get your ring off. You may have to repeat with ice and Windex, ice and Windex until you're able to get it off. Now, if it is to the point where you can't get it off, it's not coming off, and you need to have the ring removed. There are ways to do that. My first recommendation is check with your jeweler. A jeweler is able to cut the ring off your finger with the least possible damage caused to the fingers. They know what goes into it, they know what it takes to repair it or rebuild it, so they're going to do the least amount of pulling and bending on your ring to cause the least amount of repairs needed after you've had the ring cut off. If you, you know, if your finger is purple or red and you're panicking and you do happen to go into a medical facility or your fire department, they're able to cut it off too. Just let them know to be gentle on the pieces. But again, that's not their first concern. Their first concern is just to get that ring off your hand and then make sure your finger is okay. I have a couple examples here I would like for you to see of two rings that were cut off this last week for one of my clients. and. The first one, as you can tell, first of all, not only is it cut off, 
it is completely pulled apart in two different directions. So at this point, this ring is not salvageable. What we're having to do is remove all these diamonds, build a brand new ring, and then reset all the diamonds. As you can tell, that process will be more expensive than just having to refuse the ring back together and then do a simple sizing. But it was cut off by a medical professional, and like I said, their first you know priority is to remove the ring. And then the same case with this one. This one they also had to cut off, and again, as you can tell, they went ahead and cut off a whole piece of it. This one, a little bit of an easier fix, but actually what you can't see is that the ring is completely cracked at the place where they pulled it apart right here. So again, we're having to redo the whole base of that ring from scratch as opposed to a simple sizing. So hopefully none of these cases have happened to you, but if they have, share your stories with us. And if you do have to have something removed or cut off, check with your jeweler first. If you bought your ring from us, please come see us. Let us handle it as best as we can and as carefully as we can so we can minimize any possible damage uh, on your ring. If you need any assistance, if you have any questions about other cases that have happened to you that you would like clarification, feel free to reach out to us via either our Facebook page, email info at israeldiamond.com, or you can call us toll free at 888-492-9300. We look forward to hearing from you.